その飲んでみてほしいんだおお<笑>結構即効性があるらしいよこれ一緒に飲んで大丈夫なのかま混ぜても大丈夫多分聞いてきたら我慢しなくてもいいからね At this point throughout our journey in Mashoko Tensei, there have been so many episodes that have just left me like, I don't know if the word speechless is a, is a theme, but like when I come onto the camera and I'm just like, okay, what do I tell everybody? You know, what, you know, how do I put this awesomeness into words? I think that's the struggle that I'm having once again. I have to say upfront, you know, I think. Episode 12 encompassed everything that I wanted from it, and it gave me a little bit more.、Um, it also gave me a little bit of pause as well, too, for kind of where we're heading.、Uh, but let me tell you that my best thing that I loved about this,、uh, this episode the most, and I think that is Luke. And I know you might be like, yo, what the F t h o u g h t would you be, Luke? Yo, the fact that Luke. Went to action, right? The fact that Luke completely sympathized with, with Rudy, right? Like his specific issue is not an issue that, you know, most, most women can really like understand, you know? And as a man and as Luke, who's part of the Grey Rats, who seemingly have a really, you know, long, long lineage and history of being、uh, scoundrels in a certain sense, you know, he can really sympathize with, with Rudy's particular issue. As I think, you know, for all of my,、uh, you know, for all of my male watchers out there, I think that we can all kind of like put ourselves in Rudy's shoes. And there's probably been at least one moment in your life, you know, in this realm of things that, you know, hey, you've like, yeah, I've been Rudy in that point. Obviously not, maybe not for like this long and stuff, but it's like, yo, we've all had a moment of、uh, inadequacy <laughs> at some point. Point in time. And for my female watchers, well, you know, that's one of the things that you just have to understand of like, you know,、uh, um, you know, you just have to imagine you wanting something, you know, wanting some bodily function to occur, and it's just simply not happening. And you want it with all your being and all your might, but it just It just doesn't quite get there. So I think that, you know, Luke, this episode, you know, his, not only his, his sympathizing with. With Rudy, I like how he talked up, you know, s y l p h i e I like how he went, he got the aphrodisiac again. You know, I, I, at this point, I'm completely convinced the writer, you know, the author is just completely、um, absorbed with rehashing things he's done in the past in like a really cool little way. Like, I, I think he just. Like, he thinks he's doing like the anime lord's work or like the manga lord's work, you know, as he kind of、uh, does those kinds of things. But I was like, okay, you know, the, this, in this sense, right, in this particular one, the aphrodisiac totally makes sense. I love how Luke, another gray rat, you know, is, is in possession of it. I like how he was like, yo, eventually I was going to use this to like raise money because it's worth a lot of money. He's like, but you've been helping me out. I'm going to give it to you. Uh, I like how then, you know, Sylvie, no hold bar. She's like, yo, I'm about to go in. And then, last thing on Luke, I like how、um, when he was talking to her about not really being fem- feminine in that way, he was like, yeah, you got to know the gray rats, we, we you know, we're,、uh, you know, we, We like the,、mm, we like, we like the, we like the bosoms and the curves and stuff. And he's like, and Sylvie's like, I just, you know, he's like, I've just never. She's never seen you that way. And I was like, oh, poor Sylphie. No, he's like, don't do him like that.、Uh, so I just loved all of that, right? Okay.、Uh, then, you know, I think let me take a two steps back. Let's go back to the cave scene, right? So、um, in the cave scene, confession complete. I think, you know, it's no, it's no secret to any、uh, viewer, watcher, reader that.、Uh, Rudy has some, has some love for Sylphie, and I think he has for you know, a very, very long time. If you think back to the Paul scene when he finally reunited with his dad, you know, the first thing he asked about is, like, where's Sylphie? You know what I mean? So we know his love is, is real. I think the love he has for his three girls, for, you know, for Eris, you know, I don't know, at this particular point right now in life, probably not so much, but deep within, the love he has for Eris, the love he has for Roxy, and the love he has for Sylphie. All three very different, but all very, very real. So I like how he confessed to her and basically like solidified that bond.、Uh, I like how we got a lot of Sophie fan service in the cave. Like she was just like 
posed up and everything. I was like, yo, lots of nods and call back to his same um, experience with Eris, right? How we got to see her thrown onto, before their first time or whatever, he, we got to see Eris thrown onto uh, the bed when he completed his 12th birthday or whatever it was. And that's kind of the same scene we got here. But just like that, too, this also didn't end up being his first time. It happened later with that character. So same thing here. It didn't happen now with Sylphie, you know, because, you know, his soldier uh, didn't have all his gear on to go to battle yet. Uh, it, it happened later on in the episode. Um, so I really like all of that. I like how they were able to spend a lot more time and kind of establish themselves in that sense. Uh, then skipping all the Luke and Ariel stuff, right? We go a little bit later, right? And Sophie enters, you know, she enters the domain. She locks the door. She tells him straight up, she's like, yo, I'm going to be spending the night with you. I'm spending the night with you, Rudy. Uh, and he's like, okay, goddamn. Uh, and she, you know, by the, by the, she's putting all of the, uh, not opinions, but the advice from Ariel and Luke together, right? She brought some drink. You know, she's showing a little bit of, you know, showing a little bit of, like, she's you know, using her words, you know, a little, little bit of drink, and then she's using Luke's with the aphrodisiac to put it all together. Uh, they spent some time, and she was like, yo, bah. she grabbed it, too. She was just like, yo, bah, that's it. Take it. And I like how Rudy said, F it, dude. He's like, at this point, I think he's like, you know, he looks at it, too. He's like, this looks so familiar. I love that whole scene. He's like, where have I seen this before? You know what I mean? It's like, come on, bro. But, you know, he's like, where have I seen this before? And he's like, look, 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 look. And, you know, no problem. No, he just said no hesitation on it. And Sylphie was just like, give me some of that. And she like, look, 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 you know, and she started the, you know, when uh, everything started to happen. I like how you said, you know, is it safe to mix with alcohol? It's like, you know, uh, and I like how she started getting all hot, bothered, you know, sweating, you know, like, you know, uh, vibrating and everything. Like, you know, I like how it worked really fast on her and then, then it worked on our boy, you know. And once again, another callback, you know, is uh, she said, what did, what did she say? Um, the whisper, right? Uh, you know, she said the whisper. So she uh, she whispered into um, uh, into Rudy's ear. She was like, you know, dig in, dig in, Papa. You know, just kind of similar to how uh, Eris did the yang yang, you know, the little meow meows. Uh, you know, she had, Sophie had her own variation of that. And again, just like the air, the heiress scene, you know, that's what got him like, pop, 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 pop. you know, that's what got him going, you know, once again, I was like, yeah, let's get it like that. I like, uh, she had her own little variation of that, you know? Uh, and then, you know, next, you know, they do their stuff, you know, he sees a little blood stain, you know, we all know what it would it do. Uh, you know, he eventually remember the, the aphrodisiac on how he saw it, you know, in Renoa when he had originally purchased it and where that came from. Uh, and then, you know, he started to get emotional because he, you know, he had a very similar PTSD because of, uh, Eris, but unlike Eris this time, she showed back up and, um, you know, consult her and he thanked her and everything else. And, he, and later on in the episode, he went to go and, um, you know, talk to Ariel and basically say, yo, I don't do politics, but if it if it involves my woman, like you count on me. And then the marriage stuff, that kind of took me a little bit back. You know, I if you told me like, oh, you know, uh Eris or not Eris, uh Sylphie and and Rudy are gonna be married at some point, I'd be like, oh yeah, of course. Like, you know, like yeah, you know. But it happening this quick, I was like, dang, Sylphie, Sylphie Grey Rat, let's go, girl. Get it. Dreams come true for our girl. Uh, so now it's like, okay, where do we go next? Because the next thing I thought we were going to get to, right, is him leaving the school and Roxy coming back into the mix. So, you know, at some point, Roxy's going to come back into the mix. I'm assuming that he goes to where his mom's should be now. So I'm assuming that we're, and this is just all speculation. I'm just guessing at this point. But I'm, I'm assuming we leave the school, like he imparts the school. And I'm assuming that now, you know, he's cured. So he's, you know, he could check that off his list. You know, that's what he was here for the school for. So I'm assuming now he goes where mom's is, reunites with mom. And by reuniting with mom, also reunites with Roxy. Does he bring Sophie with him? Do they get married and, and Sophie stays back until he gets back from that? Um, if he does take Sophie, you know, how does that, in, what does that interaction look like, you know, between her and Roxy? Is it acceptance? You know, what's going to happen now? You know what I mean? So I just... Like, Roxy's my favorite character of the show. So it's like, yo, know, I put priority, you know, over everybody else. Roxy, number one, and then and then Ares, then Sophie to me. Uh, so it's like, where would we go from here? You know, so 
Anyways, part two is going to be out uh, the next core. I think it, it jumps into winter. I think we're skipping fall going into winter. So obviously, I'll see you guys for part two. But wow, what an, what an adventure, what a journey. And I think this episode was really, really good. I think that, you know, this is what we're building up to. And we finally got here. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, Rudy can he get the flag up to the flagpole uh, up to the top. And, you know, I think we, he waves it proudly. Also, the art at the end of the episode, fire, a little callback to little, Ru a little Rudy, little Sophie. I uh, really like that as well, too. So, anyways, guys, thank you guys for being with me all season long for Mashoko Tensei uh, Season 2, Part 1. I'll see you guys for Mashoko Tensei Season 2, Part 2, or Core 2, whichever you want to uh, refer to it as. But, wow, what an episode. This one's definitely going to stick with me. And also, I can't wait to rewatch the whole thing again when it gets dubbed. Uh, it's it's almost all the way dubbed right now. I think it's on episode 7 or 8, but your boy going to rewatch it once again. All right, my friends, I'm going to see you in the next season in fall. I'm going to see you on the next core from Ashoko Tensei. Selfie!